I am curious about Jay Powell's comments about lending activity. In his words, still relatively healthy, although it has slowed from where we were a few months ago here. I guess the big question everyone wants to know is, is there a risk that that lending starts to contract rather than hold on to some of that growth? Well, I think the key words was, has slowed, right? Yeah. I mean, and how much has it slowed? Yeah. There's no question it's contracting and it's going to continue to contract, not just because of the, the, the high rates, but because there's the banks aren't putting the liquidity that they were in the past. I mean, the, bank, the big banks have been out of that game for a while in terms of really lending yeah. because of the overregulations and taking out the liquidity. And now we've seen what's happened with some of the smaller mid-sized banks, you know, the scare in the markets for the three of them, uh, you know, failing. So I think that's going to be an issue, but it's also an opportunity for other asset classes, uh, like we spoke on our panel on Monday, yeah. like private credit. But I definitely think yeah. the, uh, that uh, it's going to be slowing and it's, and it's an issue. Well, let's talk about some of those opportunities. A lot of people are trying to draw parallels to the global financial crisis with regards to the risk and the impact. But there's another parallel there, which is the opportunities that were born out of that. You talk about the regulations on the big banks, your business, the private credit business overall, private equity for that matter, really sort of boomed partly because of that. And now when people look at the regional banking crisis and the retrenchment there, they're maybe seeing a potential sort of redux of that where more people start to gravitate to the private space. Well, people are constantly looking for money, right, for startups, for, for medium-sized uh, firms. And so where are they going to go? Yeah. I mean, back, we're here at the Milken Conference back in the 80s. Uh, Michael did an amazing job by actually producing an asset class of high yield or yeah. junk bonds back at the time it's called. And now I think people are going to need money. And one of the places, you know, that is going to be afford them some is private credit, especially yeah. in this time. I think it's uh, we're seeing a rise of it. I think we're going to see an, an, even uh, more of a rise in that. So what specifically in that space? are you looking at, or more importantly, what are your clients or potential clients looking at in terms of the type of alternative assets, the type of classes that maybe they can find that return yield or even just safety? Well, that's the thing. A lot of our uh, clients are looking for safety mm -hmm. and they're looking to kind of uh, mute some of the volatility in the markets. Mm -hmm. uh, we're long-term investors and uh, we feel that if you have the right risk and diversified portfolio, you can withstand any of this. Like we had, last year was a terrible year for both bonds and for equities, as we know. But um, if you look, if you were invested properly and you look at this year, we're starting to get a nice bounce in the equity world, the NASDAQ, S&P and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I think the opportunities um, in private credit, like we spoke, right. what are the things that we're doing? We're coming out with a fund, an interval fund okay. um, in June. Uh, with partnering up with a great firm called Axia that's one of the biggest private credit managers in the world. And we're in the, because of the structure of the interval fund, we're able to offer it and offer managers exposures to people in retail that they haven't been able to get exposures to these managers in the past. And that's what's something that's really, really great about yeah. that structure being an interval fund. And I think that we're going to have a, a, a yeah. great opportunity here. The demand from the retail side, it's there, it's still it's, healthy? It's very healthy and we're right. hearing that. Yeah. We also have a wealth management arm, right. which helps us as we create funds, we uh -huh. listen directly to our clients. Right. Of course, we listen to the wirehouses where we have a lot of our funds on the platforms with. We listen to the IRAs yeah. that you know sell a lot of our product. But we also have the end user through our wealth management. Yeah. And this is what we're hearing. They want this kind of exposure. They want to be able to invest like the, the, the big boys mm -hmm. and have opportunities to invest with Apollo, with Carla, with BlackRock, Blackstone, and some of these managers. And so we're creating a product yeah. that gives them the opportunity to do this. I am curious. I only have about a minute left, uh, John. A year from now, you come back to Milken. What do you think the mood's going to be a year from now here? Well, I think it's going to be a lot different because I think this is, today was a big point with the Fed raising again. Mm -hmm. I think they telegraphed it so no one's really surprised what happened. Um, and now I think within a year, we're going to see a clear direction of where we're going. Uh, is this enough? Is this, are they going to stop? And I think the markets have an intuitively a very positive uh, outlook in terms of forward earnings. Yeah. So I think 
forward earn, earnings and a positive outlook yeah. is going to be very, a, a huge plus for the equity markets. And I think, you know, we're going to be uh, very, yeah. very surprised that the outlook's going to be pretty positive a year from now.